What up YouTube? This is Brennan here from the Angel City Guys and this is another episode of Wrestling Weekly. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Leo Styles is normally here. He's supposed to be here right now, but unfortunately he cannot make it due to the fact that he is going through therapy for PTSD. Yes, it's, uh, we haven't wanted to talk about it for a while because you know it's a very personal issue to him. But uh, you know we can't hide anymore that uh, you know he, as you may have known last year, he took uh, quite the beating from the women aglow, and he's really never recovered to be quite honest. You know he felt the pain deep down and he just couldn't get over it. So now he's he's in therapy, you know, just like because uh, he's a coward, quite frankly, you know, because as we all know, only cowards go to therapy because they get beaten up by the women aglow. So you know one of us has to be a professional here, so that's gonna be me. And I'm here because, as you may know, this week, WWE is having the Super Showdown in Australia. You know, they're having another uh, Shrimp on the Barbie, I guess, if uh, 60,000 fans or something like that. It's going to be quite the event, you know. Um, I'll, be glad, I'll be able to watch it. I don't know if they let uh, people in uh, halfway houses watch wrestling or not. But I'm sure Leo Styles, you know, if he can see it, maybe he'll do it. But, you know, enough about him. Let's get to the meat and potatoes. What's going on here? Let's get to the oi, oi, oi of the matter. The first match of the night is going to be Becky Lynch versus Charlotte Flair for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Now, this has been one of the more interesting storylines going on in WWE right now because of what's been going on with Becky Lynch. Becky Lynch has taken what they call a heel turn. But the problem with this heel turn is that people still love her. Her motivations are still on point. Everybody, you know, can I think can relate to her as a character and what she's been going through. And because of this, they're not going to boo her. I'm not going to boo her. I'm sure you guys aren't going to boo her either unless you're a Charlotte Flair fan or else you're maybe a Ric Flair. But even, even Ric Flair is going to boo her. You know why? It's game respect game. But that is not going to matter because that's Saturday, Super Showdown. Becky Lynch is going to retain her belt. It's going to be a fantastic match. I think it's going to be one for the ages even. But I cannot see... Uh, outcome in which the storyline can continue and still be interesting without Becky Lynch holding on to the title. So I'm gonna go with Becky Lynch retaining her belt as my first pick. Second pick for the second match is going to be Naomi and Asuka beating the hometown Elconics in a tag team match. Now this is basically WWE testing the waters for their proposed women's tag team division that they want to do sometime after the WWE pay-per-view evolution. Now all this matches as a way for the home crowd, the home crowd team rather, to get a little rah rah, to get a little cheer from the fans before to get otherly scraped by Naomi and Asuka, who are basically getting this match as a thank you for having their careers utterly probably destroyed. Maybe not destroyed, it's a bit harsh, but they've definitely been screwed over this year as far as booking and storytelling goes. You know, they were both getting monster pushes, it seemed like, just a year ago, and now they're teaming up together against the Ilconics. Woohoo! But it doesn't matter because they are going to get that victory tonight, and I got to pick. Naomi and Asuka for the second match. My third pick, I'm going to have to pick WWE SmackDown Tag Team Champions, The New Day, retaining over the bar. Now, The New Day have been about as elite as you can be in a tag team in the last couple of years. Now, they have had the longest reigning WWE Tag Team Championship in history. Maybe even the longest tag team reign in all of wrestling, but I can't confirm that, so I'm going to stick with WWE for now. And it's ironic because their longest run was actually ended by The Bar who they are facing on Saturday. But it doesn't matter because I think this is going to be a chance for the New Day to retain and to keep their luster around as the bar kind of just go through the motions, not through any thought of their own, but because it's simply just, you know, outside factors being uh, Sheamus's neck injury and the Cesaro situation, which I don't have time to get into right now, but as some of you may know, he's kind of been looking down the outs of WWE for a while and sounding more and more like pretty soon it's going to happen, but it doesn't matter because the New Day are going to retain the tag team titles in the third match of the night. Now next we have what is going to be one of the more interesting matches of the night, and I say this because it is a cruiserweight title fight, and I say that sarcastically because unfortunately WWE has really screwed the pooch when it comes to the cruiserweight division. You know, I think they could be one of the more exciting, if not the most exciting element of wrestling right now, especially with the physicality and the kinetic energy they bring that quite frankly, you can't see very much anymore in WWE because of safety concerns amongst other issues. Now, they haven't been using them properly, so the cruiserweights kind of floundered, but I think the hometown hero, Buff Buddy Murphy, is gonna win against Cedric Alexander. I think he's gonna be the new champion. I also think on top of that, it will be the only title change of the night. We have uh, Leo Styles' daddy, AJ Styles, 
he which he will be taking on Samoa Joe for the WWE Championship. Now, this has been a pretty intense feud. The storyline's been uh, crazy. It's, they've been pulling the whole uh, family card out of the pocket. And, you know, even though I'm never really a fan of when they reuse storylines, I do admit it's made it an interesting story between the two top wrestlers. But I think AJ Styles gets the victory, and I think that he's going to retain the belt for reasons I'll get into a little later. But all you need to know is, as much as I would love to see Samoa Joe, with all the dick moves he's pulled, get that belt, the payoff, the storyline, I don't see it happening. So I got to pick AJ Styles retaining the WWE Championship. Next, we have Ronda and the Bella Twins versus the Riot Squad. Now, I think there's been a lot of uh, hoobula about the, the Bellas and Ronda Rousey being that the rumored uh, main event for Evolution is going to be Nikki Bella versus Ronda Rousey for the title. But I think much ado about nothing, at least for tonight, I think the Bellas and Ronda are going to get that victory. And I think it will lead to something that sets up their match in the future, but I don't think it'll be anything specifically from this match. Could be wrong, but I don't think so. So I'm going to pick Nikki and Brie Bella with Ronda Rousey to the win for my pick. Next up, we have The Shield versus The Dogs of War, or as I like to call them, Braun Strowman and Company. Now, I have to say, this has actually been one of the more interesting elements that WWE has had going for a while. You know, this seems to be a playbook out of the Attitude Era where they have a storyline going in which it involves many of the top people in one story, which is something that they've not really had to a positive effect for quite some time. And I think right now, they're really killing it with this. Granted, there's been some things that have kind of, you know, ushered it a tad, but I think so far it's been pretty decent. There's been, you know, there's a lot of rumors that uh, Dean Ambrose will be turning heel and turning on the Shield. However, I don't see it happening on this particular night. I think the Shield are going to beat the Dogs of War, and I think they're going to be victorious in Australia that night. Next up, we have one of the more interesting matches of the night, which is going to be Daniel Bryan versus The Miz for the number one contendership for the WWE title. Sounds nice to hear that, you know, it really just feels like that they don't usher in the contendership as much as they should, you know, they'll make it really, the title really stand out. But that's what they're doing here, which is they're turning this feud, you know, they're actually giving this feud, which has been ongoing really for the last couple years and just really now starting to kind of come into its form. They're giving it some stakes, which I like because it's, you know, starting to get stale to be quite honestly. You know, they had the mixed tag team match at Hell in a Cell, which is pretty whatever and then they had a decent enough match at SummerSlam but the ending I thought was pretty predictable and I've been waiting for this sort of match to really pay it off and I think you are going to get quite the payoff I think Daniel Bryan will be victorious and I think it will set up him versus AJ Styles for the WWE Championship down the road which will also be a storyline that it still includes The Miz and Samoa Joe still quite honestly I think this is going to be what Smackdown does to hold the show together for the next part of the year up until Wrestlemania or maybe Royal Rumble an interesting match, a bit of a novelty match, but it's going to be fun nonetheless. We have Bobby Lashley, a.k.a. How Leo Styles envisions himself, with John Cena versus Elias and Kevin Owens. Now, Elias is one of the most, if not the most, over wrestler in WWE right now. His ability to manipulate a crowd is, bar none, one of the best I've ever seen. He can go from being cheered to being booed like that. And he plays the role so well. And he can play the crowd so well. It's just a joy to watch Elias anytime he does one of his shows. Kevin Owens, unfortunately. I love Kevin Owens. They've, I feel like of any wrestler the last three years, he's really been the less, you know, the most screwed over, especially since he lost the Universal title. I mean, they've done a good job of keeping him around, keeping him in a storyline of Shane McMahon last year. Yes, but really, that's not what Kevin Owens should be doing. Kevin Owens should be just a fat guy who mauls people and just fucking beats the shit out of them. You can cut that out, I'm sure. Sorry, Leo. But... Anyhow, it doesn't matter because, let's, let's be real, John Cena is not coming all the way to Australia to lose to Elias and Kevin Owens. I think him and Bron, Bobby Lashley, rather, they'll get the victory, and I think it'll be a fun match. won't be anything great, but I think you'll get a good Elias show before the match, and you'll get to see John Cena and Bobby Lashley, and yay, it'll be fun. And Kevin Owens will be able to take those bumps, and you'll get a good time. Now, last, but certainly not least, is the match I am most excited about, and that is the main event for the last time ever, wink. It's going to be Triple H versus The Undertaker. Now, I've had conflicting feelings about this. I shouldn't say feelings. I've had, con well, yeah, they are feelings. I've had conflicted feelings on how the match is going to go. 
Up until very recently, I was convinced that the whole point of the marketing for this match was to try to convince me that somehow Triple H is going to beat The Undertaker. And well, to be honest, I think after the way they've set up the match, Triple H is going to beat The Undertaker. Now, it's not going to be a clean win. There's going to be shenanigans. You know, as you may know, the Big Red Machine Kane is going to be in his brother, The Undertaker's corner. Right on. And we're going to have in Triple H's corner the one and only, the Heartbreak Kid, Shawn Michaels. Aka how Leo Styles was sounding when he was been his ass kicked by the Women of Glow. But it doesn't matter. I think somehow the involvement's going to be there between the other guys, and I think it's going to get Triple H to victory. Well, that's my predictions for Saturday night. Uh, let us know who you think is going to be victorious, and let us know what you think is going to happen down in the comments below. Also, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe. All right, this is Brent Eboff from the Angel City Guides. Holla!